Evening everyone. Uh, so this is what happens when an isolated senior lady opens up her bedroom curtain windows and witnesses the love of her life in a garden. And it's from her perspective and it's called O. Alan Titchmarsh. <laughs> Oh, fancy a man like Alan Titchmarsh, revamping my lawn. I'd be dazzling surprise on the sudden crack of dawn. To pull on your curtains and witness the man rejuvenating my garden to the best that he can. I never knew he could make me blush with his agricultural powers. Shovel in the earth with a blanket of flowers. Oh, he can mow my garden any day of the week. The fun and the frolics with his agrarian streak. How I have admired him since the peak of his career. The compulsion, the obsession, and the loving revere. How I made my husband file for a divorce. Since the moment I saw him on the vintage ground force. Oh, Alan, how you ferment me, if only you know the way you plough up my crops with your long garden hoe. You're my agronomist, my human, intellectually wise, with your draconian grin and those big iris eyes. Oh, Alan, you are my world, it's so brawny and strong. Having a gentleman like you, how can I go wrong? The way you fond them and regravel my dried up dead weeds, their knowledge of satisfaction with my gardening needs. Oh, Alan Titchmash, please make me your wife. You're my gardening monarch, you're the love of my life. Marry me under your prickly fir tree. Oh, Alan Titchmash, you're the only man for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, as well as a writer, I'm also um, a stop motion animator. And this next piece was specifically written um, to be adapted into a hand-drawn um, stop motion, uh, which is available on YouTube, Facebook, my Twitter. And it's based on a factual um, story about how my granddad always vowed um, to take him and my grandma to book their funeral um, on the day that he retires, which is very optimistic. <laughs> and it's called, My Husband Has Booked Our Funeral. My husband has taken me to book our funeral, one of the perks of being white. I know we are in our sixties and it's good to be cautious, but I don't want to think when I might drop down dead. We may have twenty years left, he says. Tomorrow we may pop our socks. Mary, we need to be safe and sorry, he says, as I sit pondering about laying in that box. The awkward varnished casket which I chose, the time it'll become my homeward bound. Except that it won't be very pretty when I'm six feet under and buried with rats in the ground. The measurements and fixtures and approximates my anatomy becoming an entangled warp. There is no use to feeling great at appointments like these because I come out feeling like a corpse. Well, at least I will know what my new habitus will be like. Right now I have no more strife. Today has not me up to six and I feel so drained and I feel so buried alive. So now I'm going to wrap up this anecdote as I prepare for my reincarnation. This poem is to you and I hope to see you all at the wake with this personal invitation. Thank you very much.